Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our content on rebelloveshow.com. We're also on Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube. We're syndicated on Voluntary Virtues. And now you can listen to us on LRN.FM. And I think I'll, I'll be honest, that, deser- that deserves a cheer. Dude, I'm so stoked about like, this. This is great. I mean, LRN.FM. I want to take a break for just a quick second here. LRN.FM. Both of we, you listen to LRN for like a long time, right? Oh yeah, man. I I used to just have it on like at my house all the time. Yeah, me too. Just like, like in the back. Tune in radio on my on my phone. Yeah. Uh, in the car when I like I spent like over two years listening to LRN.FM. It was a lifeline for me before I got here. And uh, I mean, we're not we don't have a, a time slot. We're in the podcast loop. I don't give a shit. That's that's good enough for me. Um, that's a huge thing for us. Like we, we, we got here as a lifeline because of LRN.F and we wouldn't have discovered, you know, uh, victimless crimes, but we wouldn't discover what free keen was. We wouldn't discover what the free state project was like with the people living here. If it wasn't for LRN yeah, and man. like, we've come like this whole huge full circle and now we're on LRN. I am become LRN.FM. So, I mean, for both of us, like, we, we understand that LRN is a lifeline to thousands and thousands of people out there on, on you know, in the Internet, you know, that are alone out there in the, in the wilderness known as society. And, uh, yeah. 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 Hey, you out there. We're, we're like the shining beacon we're, on the hill. We're here for you. In, uh, on, uh, <laughs> in the free state. Come to yeah, New come, Hampshire. Come hang with us. It's cool. It's like yeah, this, out, too. Yeah, come out here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, we gotta do a show, so that's that's my little pitch for LRN. We're by the way, by the way, LRN.FM. That's Rob Matthias. I'm Rob Matthias, and this <laughs> I'm Shire Dude. How's Shire it going? Dude. And our guest today is none other than the man behind the most popular documentaries ever created in the Free State Project, none other than Bo Davis. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey. Speaking, I speaking of LRN and paying attention to everything that has happened here. Do you realize, like, we both knew who you were before we got here a long time ago? It's weird, isn't that weird? <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. Is it weird when people come here and they know who you are? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I've had that happen to me. Like, people move here and they know who I am. So it's it's I I can relate a little bit, hmm. but. Yeah, I can understand how it's kind of <laughs> it's a little surreal when people know who you are before you know, when they when they meet you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, though, like I knew, God, I knew pretty much the who's who before I got here. Like I knew everyone that was before I moved here. But it has to be surreal for you because you've been here. How many years have you been here? Um, coming up on four years now. Oh wow! Wow, that's like a decade in Shire time. <laughs> <laughs> Narnia, Narnia time, right? <laughs> I mean that that's like a, I don't know for like for me like a month here feels like months or, or almost like half a year or whatnot. Like a week feels like multiple weeks or a month. Like I don't know if the, if you've had that uh, a feeling from since before you moved. Like if you compare like the time how time goes here compared to how time went before you moved. I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's all relative, as, as you know, and uh, it, it's really. I mean, like, what you, as you know, like you you get wrapped up in projects and everything, and 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 before you know it, you know, a month has passed, two months, you know, and all of a sudden, wow, I've been here a year. <laughs> um, but but I mean, you know, there's certain parts that drag on, but that's life. That's that's what happens. You know, I have one month left. For my one year anniversary, what are you one gonna month. What are you gonna do to celebrate, man? I don't know. I I need to celebrate. Like I don't even care about my birthday. I don't care about like any other date. My my date's January twenty fifth. That's my date. I I I had a surreal moment the uh, the other day because like I moved in January. All right, so it's winter. It's cold. Though it was like it was actually warm for January here. I remember moving. And uh, I left Chicago when it was a uh, a polar vortex going on. All right, so it was like negative forty degree wind chills and stuff like that. And uh, a friend of mine from there helped me move and uh, leave. And by the way, he's actually planning on moving here. Hopefully, I got, he keeps calling me. I keep missing his calls. Um, I think he listens to. Us. So Stephen, hey, get your ass to New Hampshire. Um, but I remember him dropping me off at the airport and all that jazz. I come here and like I. 
I remember exactly what the weather was like. Like, I remember it to a T, like, the weather, like, there was some snow on the ground. Like, I, I remember it picturely clear. And uh, I remember um, walking up to, uh, I went to the quill for uh, Thanksgiving because, you know, I'm an orphan here. I don't have family here, you know, and whatnot. And uh, that was when, like, winter had hit was that day. And it was really surreal for me because it felt like the first time I walked up to it. Because the first time I walked up to it was the exact same weather conditions. And it was a little surreal, like, home. Oh, like, I've been here for, like, a year now almost, you know. So, like, it was kind of starting to hit that I've been here. But it feels like I've been here for years. And I haven't been, but it feels like I have been. Well, you know, that's just because of the community. You know, it, it, it would take years uh, for for somebody to, you know, garner this much community support and and backing and be able to meet so many people like-minded people that value the same things that you do you know it would it would take years to do that in in your hometown and build this kind of libertarian mecca you know i I might be using that word wrong but oh it's definitely (laughs) a uh it's definitely a libertarian mecca i mean where else is there well i guess you can say the blue ridgers but (laughs) this is this is the mecca where you should stay yeah (laughs) like that's the difference yeah absolutely (laughs) well i mean well i mean uh, davi barker might get on me for saying that (laughs) uh, using the word or any other i don't know Um, well i mean it's more (laughs) so just to describe what uh what it's like i mean you know we're not trying to like steal a word from a religion or anything like that yeah I think it's a mis mis in, uh, in representation interpretation. I don't. I don't know. Well, anyway, but, <laughs> but no, I mean it's the it's it's. Oh, that yeah, that's where you use the phrase of sorts. So it's a mecca of sorts, and that just like lets you off the hook. <laughs> well, there we go. I mean, because <laughs> then th- that's like an imperfect, you know, like of sorts. I mean, what, what's what's crazy <laughs> to me is like you know you 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 hear about like this community and don't get me wrong there's a lot of faults I have with the community don't get me wrong there's drama that happens but this is every anywhere community. Every, every community is like that and it's not not everything is what you think it's going to be but that being said like this community actually exists there's actual it, it's real and just as there's uh, unexpected uh, things that you may not agree with or things that we still need to fix um, there are new things that are popping up all the time that undiscovered uh, possibilities and, and great qualities of, of this type of community that unsurface themselves. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, looking at, I've got this notebook uh, and I write down like each new idea for a project in it and I try to keep organized that way because otherwise it's just like a bunch of like receipts and like napkins that are like drawn on with markers and stuff. And I'm looking through the notebook this morning actually and I see the projects in the beginning compared to the projects at the end. The beginning projects are like, oh, I can make like a little sketch company with like sock puppets. And like at the end, like there's so like grandiose and like, like there's these big projects that we can do here. And I'm only just realizing that like you, wherever you are, if you're not in New Hampshire right now, you, you're probably not dreaming big enough. Absolutely. I mean, you can do, you can, you have support to do whatever you really want here. And just, you have yeah. a backing and uh, it's incredible to have like, that backing like you know that there's support and you know what you're doing like for me like my my big thing is just trying to get people to move here not that i don't really think i need to do that but well you know it's just it's just getting we we're so close we're like we're uh, ap- ap- approaching seventeen thousand uh signers right now we need to trigger the move well yeah it, so what i'm really excited about uh for when they're they're you know, of course, it's a it's a five year commitment for people to make the move. You know, so uh, it's not all going to happen at once. I imagine a lot of people will move at once when the news gets out that we we hit twenty thousand. But you know, it, it when twenty thousand or even if even if we hit the move and ten thousand people are or only ten thousand people move. That's 10,000 like-minded people. That's 10,000, maybe 1,000 of those are entrepreneurs. That's 1,000 entrepreneurs, 1,000 starters, 1,000 business owners or, you know, people on the ground doing things. Um, I mean, you know, so 10,000 people move, 1,000 of those are entrepreneurs. How many more of those are politicos, activists? You know, you know that that's an interesting point because I'm I'm very volunteerist. I don't I don't want to vote. I don't want to take part in the state or anything like that. 
Um, that being said, I want as many minarchists as possible to move here. The reason being is because those minarchists are a within six months are gonna. I mean, let's be honest, they're gonna be anarchists in six months. All right, that's that's a given. But even then, those minarchists will uh, they will inspire other minarchists to come here. You know, they'll they'll inspire more other people to come here, and they'll they'll go down the rabbit hole as well. So I'm not against. Um, and, and on top of that, the minarchists that do run, the politicos that do run, almost all of those politicos are they're on the same page as you know volunteers and anarchists. They're they're still there. They they don't believe that they, you anyone can own anyone else. And and we all know that you know uh, more freedom, more available, you know freedom, more opportunities, you know it, it's 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 going to result in in I would think uh, uh, better solutions, better uh, uh, you know solutions to the problems we face. Uh, the, one of the things that that happens when you have government intervention is you have a lack of opportunity of choices, or or new. Uh, ways of doing things so once you say you can't do this you you can't um, you or you have to get this certain permission or license or you have to pay you know you set a standard or you set you know and, and it's not just a standard it's something that you're you know bullying people you're enforcing them into this lifestyle so so to <laughs> so opening up the opportunities of the free market is going to allow all kinds of betterments in 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 many different uh aspects of life and uh that's what we're trying to do here you know well one thing i love is with the community it's so when it comes to ideologies and what people do it's so different you know i mean you get the the civ disc crowd you know you got the uh the media crowd i mean the media people that which you know all of us here at this table are the politicos. The, you, you got, got the, them. You got the politicos. Yeah. You got you got the the entrepreneurs. You got the uh, the Bitcoin enthusiasts and all the and everything that goes along with them, the crypto anarchists and you whatnot. You got the Shire dudes. You got the Shire. Yeah. You, <laughs> you got a Shire dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know. Um. But yeah, like every everyone brings a little bit something to the table. But the thing is, everyone comes to the table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like. I, I sit across the table from people that do vastly different things than what I do. But at the same time, we're all here for the same reason. It's like this camaraderie. It, it's very interesting because it's not everyone's doing the exact same thing. It's like a shotgun effect. Like, let's see what, what sticks and see what works. And everyone does their own little thing, you know? Well, that's the, that's the thing here. You know, like, we're again, uh, it's it comes down to freedom. And so what is freedom on a on a when we look at it from a collective as you know, uh, perspective, if you will, looking at the whole? You know, it's it's spontaneous order. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's everybody doing their own thing, like you're saying. And so things happen. I, I just sorry. I want to point out here like is like one of the, I. So there's seventeen hundred people here. There's a lot. Uh, yeah. And and, and 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 not, you know, all seventeen hundred people. It, of course, that's out of one point three or so million uh, New Hampshire population, uh, but the 1,700 people that are here are are not all of them do. You know, they go out and actively do. But you know, there's say there's 25 percent of those people are are really gung ho on the liberty thing, and you know, very active in voicing it in whatever field you know they they want to do. Uh, that that's. <laughs> It's huge. It it is huge, and so what it does is it inspires more, and it's inspiring movers. It's inspiring some of the other seventy five percent or so, or whatever that ratio is. Uh, but the other people that are, you know, that are are just, you know, some of them are just here just to live, just to live okay. free, take advantage of that ability. You do realize that the two people sitting across the table from you signed the intent to move after watching Victimless Crime Spree. Yeah. 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 yeah like so, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, stuff people and do you here. you guys jump to it. You know, you guys are examples of, of doers, you know, and like many others. And yeah. <sighs> yeah, man, so you're making the right kind of content there, you know, attracting the right kind of people. Yeah. Well, that's like with the one, <laughs> like, I've had people message me about um, watching the 101 
uh, and which we're going to talk about in a second because we haven't we haven't even got to that yet. We're already you know almost twenty fifteen some minutes in, and we haven't even talked. About if you're this listening yet. to this and you haven't seen one hundred and one reasons, go to one zero one reasonsfilm dot com. There you go. And uh, yeah. 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 101reasons.com. How would you come up with the name? 101reasonsfilm.com. You had it right. Film? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yes. go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, but, yeah, like everything people do, you know, inspires everything. What's really amazing is um, I lo- I don't know why I do this, but I do the same. It's whenever I meet a new mover, a lot of times what I try to do, I was like, obviously, you know, like a couple conversations come up. One, what was your red pill moment? A lot of times it's Ron, uh, Ron Paul. Sometimes it's other people. You know, uh, some situation happened. You know, I don't buy it as like, oh, I was always an anarchist. Or, like, fuck you. No, you weren't. You were a status and you know it. You know. Well, no. Uh, most people, 90% of them, 95%. No, I, I, really? I, I 100% born, disagree Born with as you. an anarchist, really? Everyone, I think everyone was born an anarchist and then you're corrupted into... Uh, into believing okay, that okay. you have to, you know, go by these certain things. Well, like, what I'm trying to say is everyone was a status at some time. That's what I'm trying to get across as. Except for the people that weren't exposed to statism. Okay. But that's very, right. very Although the <laughs> Liberty Babies, man, that we're the having Liberty over babies, here. Liberty Babies, yes. Yeah. The Liberty Babies here, yes, there's a future for them. Let's peaceful parenting, Stefan Malini, peace be upon you. Uh, no, fuck you. <laughs> uh, like you're, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to go into Stefan Malini. We did that a couple episodes ago. But um, but there's still peaceful parenting. Oh, I'm I'm 100% down from, for peaceful parenting. Right. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm, yes. <laughs> um, but uh, no, most people were. Sta- I mean, I was a status at one point. I mean, yeah, hell, I was too. I mean, Shire dude here is Obama support at one point, right? I just voted for him once, man. <laughs> I voted for him too, and I apologize for getting involved my, in the my entire bad. voting system from the get go. <laughs> oh god! Sorry, two thousand eight. Jesus, I'm I'm sitting at a table with Obama supporters. I did not vote for Obama. He was the only federal vote that I uh, that I put in. Rob voted for chemtrails. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Bob Barr. <laughs> and he's pro chemtrails. <laughs> Is he pro chemtrails? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what are they spraying? <laughs> okay. Um, but no, I mean, like everything, you know, people inspire different things. I moved here for different reasons. But I always love comparing, comparing notes, you know, like how the fuck did you get here? Like, this is like the bottom of the rabbit hole type of thing, you know? Um, and I, I'm always fascinated by this story because everyone has a story. And usually people are very, they're passionate about their story. And I'll be honest, I probably shouldn't get this secret out. But if you're the Fed, you should have a passionate story. Because if you don't have a passionate story, I'm immediately going to assume you're the Fed. <laughs> you know, you got to sell the fact why you're here. You know what I'm saying? Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I love sharing my like your red pill moment, but then your trigger moment because it's it's two moments, you know. Usually it is like you're, you're, you you had this moment where you're like, oh my god, you know what? Fuck, I I get to the Shire. I, I I belong there, you know. So I didn't actually know it as the Shire uh, when I that that was like what, a you, rel- did you call it status name? Yeah, yeah, it was New Hampshire. I oh. I oh, but I was a status then. I I voluntary I am, car- cartography. I am st- <laughs> still shedding, you know, status habits, status, you know, We're all a little status sometimes. Well, well we, and we all sort of have to play the status, you know, even still. You know, uh, everybody who drives, I don't I haven't driven in a while, but I mean, everybody who drives uh, still abides by, you know, like reluctantly. <laughs> But so I mean, statism yeah. still, per, uh, you know, permeates. Yeah, I had to, uh, I had to pay my extortion to the, to the, to the state in order for me to have the privilege to drive my car that I bought with Bitcoin on <laughs> their roads. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, I was not, I was not happy about paying that in any way, shape, or form. But you pick and choose your battles. I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a right to travel activist like a very few amount of people. That's that's a big gamble, like it, right to right, right to travel activist. It is. You, re, you really need to have money to throw at that. And you know what? It, if you really do, if somebody out there, listener, if you've got, you know, if you you're like, hey, I want to make a difference in the world, and you've got a few thousand in the bank or something, you know what? Fucking buy a little beater vehicle that you don't mind getting towed, and and go out and and you know, if you don't mind risking maybe 
at most a month or two in jail. <laughs> but but you know it would be it'd be worth it if you really plan it out and fucking I'm fucking I'm sorry. You can curse. Oh, I don't okay. Know. I don't I'm care. Drop as many f bombs as you want. Fuck fuck. fuck. Oh, but uh, really, I should stop. I should like you know vary up my lingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I like uh, how he went for it first. I though. like the. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I don't know, uh, whatever activism do it, but you know, up here at least there's more, uh, more of a network. So if you do do something crazy like that, which is, you know, pretty crazy unless you really think it through and plan to, you know, accept some uh, negative consequences. Hey, st- <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> she jumped right cat. into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's Ash. That's she's the studio cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feel, feel free to the, the spank her if you want. She's she's kind of into it. Um, uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ash is a uh, she's very friendly. I don't know. But anyways, let's talk about the 101, man. Yeah, 101 man. reasons to move to New Hampshire. You should have put move to uh, the Shire. Why'd you? Or 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. That's the name of it. Mm-hmm. You used the status name on it. Yeah. Well, that's the audience, right? I mean... Uh, well, uh, you know, I assume uh, not everybody's um, uh, going to be entirely um, self-government-minded. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't when I, when I came up here. So, like, when I moved... Um, I I was watching uh, Dave Ridley's videos, Ridleyos as they're called, <laughs> and uh, who didn't love Dave Ridley? Who still doesn't love Dave? Ridley? Right, he's great. Even he's though I've never met the man, I hear he's a recluse. He appeared one day. I know. I heard. I heard he appeared at the Quill, and I didn't get to meet him. Yeah, I've had multiple conversations with this man, I've, which is really bizarre. I had to follow an etiquette. Where I had to go through like three different loops. It went from it went from YouTube to Facebook to to email. I had to follow like this like train of thought of like how I had to communicate with him. It was really bizarre, but I mean, yeah, I I used to religiously watch Dave Ridley videos. Yes, I mean, a lot of people in this community have. Yeah, and so that was one of the things, and and also um, uh, the police accountability videos, cop block and stuff like that. Um, I used, you know, I really got into the uh, into those videos, and the, and so. I started learning about New Hampshire, like I was saying before, I didn't really know it as the Shire. I knew it as the status name. Um, but, you know, I, I knew of people, uh, like you were saying before, you know, I knew of Rich Paul and I knew of, uh, because I was really into one of the, uh, as you were, you were, I don't know if you were asking me this before, but one, one of the reasons why I moved and one of the, my red pills was uh, uh, cannabis, um, which, you know, I, I use uh psychotropically as well as uh medicinally me too and uh so um and i have been since i discovered you know that i've been lied to um i know that uh that a lot of the propaganda out there has has been either blatant lies or misinformation or uh whatever it was it was an untruth and so i it it what it did is it it opened up a huge rabbit hole into uh, you know not just a rabbit hole but one that spider webbed out and uh, all over the place and it made me ask all kinds of questions so that was a, a big red pill for me um yeah man me too actually the first time i smoked cannabis i thought back to the like the deputy sheriff coming to my uh high school classroom or my elementary no this was back in elementary school she comes to the classroom and tells us all the horrible side effects of all these drugs we could be taking and you know me as a little kid I'm thinking wait there's drugs that I can be taking because I had no idea and um, <laughs> right so they introduced the idea yeah they introduced the idea <laughs> and then I get offered later in life and of course I do it because the the easiest way to get a teenager to do something is to tell them not to do it right. and uh and then I realized I'm like, wait a minute! Like I'm not shriveling up and dying or jumping off a roof. I'm not. I don't feel stupid. I, you know, like, you know, I, I can, I can, I can take a, you know, a few days off of smoking, and I clear up as if I've never smoked ever. You know, like except for the taste of like, oh yeah, I smell somebody smoking near me. I'm like that would be nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, but that's. I've it, I've gone months without smoking, and then I'll like I'll I'll pick it back up, and then I'll go back again. 
you know and like i'll go through phases where i'll go smoke like a couple of nights a week and whatnot and then i'll go like, like i went like a month and a half uh earlier where i, I pretty much didn't smoke at all you know about a month about a month um but beforehand i was smoking you know i would say almost every night or every other night or whatnot and then i don't know uh well a i had to get a new job so that that kind of you know does that to you because like apparently employers in the state doesn't want you doing drugs so then i need money to do this you know what i'm saying um but uh yeah like i i didn't feel as if i was like you know losing it or as if like i uh was going through withdrawals or something like that i felt you know i just didn't feel high or anything like that i just felt sober i didn't i didn't have like a this urge like oh my god i have to because if i don't i'm gonna have this headache or like i get that with coffee if i don't have my coffee right i am upset i'm angry (laughs) i'm like a terrible person yeah yeah like give me my coffee i'm gonna be a happy like energetic person but if i don't i'm gonna be sluggish and pissed off (laughs) you know (laughs) but i don't feel that way when i like if i don't smoke i'm like okay i'm just not happier Right. But I'm not right, like not a, happier. Right, yeah. Not, right. But you can still be happy. I can still be happy. I'm just <laughs> exactly. not happier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, but so anyway, I'm sorry to go off on that uh, that tangent. But but uh, so cannabis was sort of a red pill. Um. And 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 to go back again, I wa- I watched a lot of Ridley videos, so that brought me to the Free State Project. When I uh, when I you know, learned of the Free State Project. I obviously went to the website, and and I went. I one of the reasons that that I moved here was uh, coming across the 101 reasons list on the uh, on one of the pages on the site, and it was. I I actually I had no idea who had wrote it or any history. I didn't know there was any history on this list. Uh, this is something I learned in the production of the movie. One thing I've learned. Is every like month or so? Now, mind you, I paid attention to this community for a long period of time. Okay, I'm still discovering historical things that happened, oh, like yeah. activist stuff, or um, like case in point, like a couple months ago. Um, I I believe you were involved with it. Yeah, you were the whole chalking of the Manchester PD. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. man. I never knew that existed. I never knew that ever happened. And there was like a post in the, like some uh, I forget which Facebook group it was. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and <laughs> that I started was an epic. That was a crazy and I watched day. it. I'm like, you know, oh my god, like that that was intense. I I didn't know that even happened in Manchester. Yeah. And you know, I, I there's other times that I've discovered things that happened that I never knew happened. Oh yeah, you know? I I I learned uh, one of the things I learned about was uh, uh, upon coming here uh, was like the um, uh, I, th- I forget what they were called, but I think it was eight is eight act. No, that was the chalking eight. That was the one you were referencing. There was another one in Keene where uh, some folks surrounded, not surrounded, uh, but they were outside a uh, uh, one of the jails, um, the Cheshire County House of Corrections, and. Uh, I think I believe they were just sign waving, but uh, several people. Oh, it was the trespass of twelve. That's what it was. Are you all familiar with that? No, no. <laughs> I'm not, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Really? So you guys have been here both almost a year, and this is another new thing. So you should, you should, uh, uh, YouTube at some point um, the trespass of twelve. And I, I'm, I'm baked, so I'm not gonna give you an accurate story or anything, but the viewers you and i don't know if that's the right so okay youtube cheshire county house of corrections or some variation of that cheshire jail um and uh 12 arrested and you'll probably find videos or at least a write-up um but uh yeah there were like 12 activists that were arrested outside the jail for uh, throwing some sort of event, like I think it was either a barbecue or um, it was, yeah, it was like not stuff like we're doing right now. Like it's, it was, it was pretty intense. The 
apparently. I had no idea. I got I'm, after this, after I'm recording, I'm gonna go Google this shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I did not know this existed. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't give you a better account no, of these. Just the fact that you're bringing it up. I mean, again, uh, I'm I'm being perfectly honest. I I had no idea this existed or even happened. Um, I know there's been talk of having like some sort of Free State Chronicles where like everything that's ever happened is like a wiki of the yeah, Free State Project. Yeah, yeah. Like there's always, there's always it, stuff well, it, that happens. It does exist as a website, but nobody uses it yet. Um, I've ha- I have an account on it and everything. Here, so, here, here well, wait, wait, before I even jump, I want I really want to ask you this question. Sure. Do you feel as if you're a historian more than anything else? Uh, Especially with the last documentary, I would. That was more so. Because sometimes, sometimes I feel like what I'm doing now doesn't mean anything today. But like years from now, like someone will have a podcast, maybe here in Manchester, maybe be in Portsmouth or the Lakes region. Who who knows what's going to happen in like ten years from now? But someone will move here, and there'll be some other. People, person that makes a documentary, or right. and there'd be another person that does like some fucking thing like Shire Dude does. I don't know, fucking know. We, I don't even know what's gonna happen. Like with uh, new movers, like they'll bring something completely different. Who knows? But down the road, they're gonna be talking about like, yeah, do you remember that Rebel Love show? And remember when their Bo Davis was on there talking about like the the this thing or something like that, or like they'll talk about like something that happened or some situation that happened that we're involved in because we took a camera. And we hit the record button. And they saw that because we hit a record button. Right. You know? Like, I feel as if, like, down the road, like, we're we're recording shit that's going on. Whether it's a picture, whether it's a podcast that we're talking about, something that happened. Whether it's a video of something that happened or a blog post. I don't know. But, like, well, that's I feel like us talking about it just alone, like, ten years from now, a decade from now, is going to be historical documents like a youtube video is like a historical document nowadays well i i I generally um and i slip from this all the time but i i generally try to live in the now anyway oh me too i i i I live my life as free and now and present as possible so you know so like uh i i you know i try not to be pushy you know pushy with people uh but uh, i i do try and affect people's lives uh, around me you know if, if somebody is uh, whether minuscule or or um, or or an extreme situation you know like I try and help uh, and, and better the you know if I can and even if it's just advice that I can offer um, but oh god what were we what? talking about? <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I was saying so, is that, like, I feel so like, you know, like, how, okay, case in point, how b- all of us have talked about how we used to watch Dave Ridley videos. Yes, we used to watch Dave right. Ridley. Right. You know, if you haven't watched a Dave Ridley video, go, go DaveRidley.com and it'll go to his YouTube channel because he doesn't have a website. And it's just an auto direct. And uh, watch his videos. Yeah. Go oh, yeah. back four or five years. Go back to way the beginning, because in Oz, he still uses the same camera. It's Dave. not HD camera, so it all looks like it was recorded like 20 <laughs> years ago. But at any rate, like go watch some stuff that happened five or six years ago. It still looks better you than know. the live stream stuff. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, man. absolutely. Live stream is way horrible. But again, Dave Ridley, I'm perfectly honest, I consider him a Free State Project historian. Yeah, well, okay. I was just gonna say he is the fucking um, the uh, the Free State Chronicle. Yeah, but he doesn't put much videos out anymore, does he? Um, he retired. He kind of like put it on hiatus. Well, people ought to donate to his thing. Yeah, I think he's looking for more <laughs> sponsors. Well, look, well, maybe you know? I don't see. That's the thing. I'm not doing this. I don't. I don't. I get enough Bitcoin donations to. Oh, by the way, you can donate Bitcoin. Go do, go to uh, rebelloveshow dot com or just like look at the show notes on anything that you're watching. There's a Bitcoin URL. Go donate. But um, I get enough for like maybe like a you know a pint at at, at Strange Brew or something like that every now and then and stuff and stuff like that. Like I'm not like you know making a living. I have a I have a slave job, a day job. Unfortunately, though, I have a new job which. Fantastic! I'm very excited about my new job. Had a when great are you day today. Go full agorist. Yeah, man. I mean, it's not the same as full keen. It's it's I full know. agorist. I, 
I really want to go full aggers, but you know what? Like, I really want to. Don't get me wrong. And then someday I plan on doing that. I really do. But I have so much little time. Like, that's because you got yourself wrapped up in the rat race. You know, like this. It's not just the rat race. It's my personal life as well. But that rat race pays for my life here and I'll, I know I, I say this to people in person and stuff like that but I really love my life like I really love it like I, I love everything about it I love All this right, life I'll I've been go. living here and that rat race that day job it pays for this yeah. you know like you can talk about all the activism all you want like you know and all go, everything going on I'll be honest I'm a slacktivist <laughs> like I haven't I, I, I haven't even uploaded an episode. Like I, 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 people that are fans are probably pissed off. You know, they're not going to hear this recording for probably like three weeks because I've been, I've had so much going on in my life that I haven't had a chance to actually sit down on a computer and edit an episode and upload it. You know, and but I love my life. Like I've had a lot of drama. I've had a lot of, you know, amazing moments. Um, I try to do act because I'm here. I'm, I came here as an activist. But I came here, like, trying to change the world, and then I found myself, and I started living instead of existing. And I find that to be more of the common than elsewhere, where a lot of activists, that are like, so, they, they relax when they get here, you know? Um, and I've kind of chilled out a hell of a lot. I mean, look at Shire, dude. He hasn't even fucking, like, you know, I remember him when he came to Liberty Forum, and I gave him my tour of uh, my first day of, uh, of being here. Which was I, I don't know I thought I gave you a pretty good tour at, Port, at uh, Liberty Forum. Yeah, man, that was great. Yeah, yeah, but you are not the person I met at Liberty Forum. You you have changed like tenfold. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, when you you uh, you interviewed him, you could tell yeah. that you 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 recorded him like within the first few weeks of him <laughs> being here because he is not the same person. Like he is like so chill and so like different than what he was when you recorded him in in the documentary it's, it's a strange dynamic once you get here because you can really like you just become a new person like you can reinvent yourself and you can also like let loose a lot because you can be the real you around you know the community you, right. you don't you, have to be like a you know pretend to stay well you, you you still get hate from some people unfortunately well you're gonna get a hate no matter what yeah no matter what but at the end of the day yes i 100 percent agree you can be whoever the fuck you want to be in this community and it's so liberating that you're around you're surrounded by so many people and it's it's incredible to like be whoever the hell you want to be and it's definitely a uh it's so liberating that like i've put I've, I've tried to find a balance between activism and living my my uh my life and i keep putting more and more toward living my life than doing this I feel like I'm a slacktivist at it, but at the same time, well, no, I I, I want to live Shire, my life. Well, I hear Shire dude is going to be much closer to the office, yeah, um, uh, fairly soon. So, I mean, what you're going to have there? I is, I understand. I'm waiting for that day. By the way, you're going to so, have me kicking you in the butt, man. So, for, <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, it's really not nothing to complain about. I mean, you're going to be like up and rolling. The two of you guys, you know, working together close. Like it's going to be, I think it's going to be good things uh, coming down coming down the pike i mean it may be is still where you have three episodes ahead you know but that's like not a problem you're like hey i've yeah, got stuff but know. when i first started this i was like i gotta edit them the next morning i get it get it up i posted it like i was all hardcore on it Dude, when I, I feel like i'm like i don't care i mean honestly like i love the listeners but it's 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 more so like i gotta it's a sacrifice of time. Time management, like time well, is. That's, well, you're gonna have division of labor here. If yeah, sure. if, if, but if he's a busy guy. Been. He's so busy as he is. Like we both well, live really you crazy guys both busy have lives. Slave jobs, I know. No, I actually like do editing though, like freelance editing. Yeah. So that would be an interesting. You know, like I could I could help you with that stuff. Well, you can edit as much as you want. I'm not yeah. gonna stop you from. I love that. editing. <laughs> yeah. Well, at any rate, what I'm saying is time. And I never used to be like this because I used to just exist and have nothing to do. Okay, so and like time, time so is the most valuable commodity I can give another human being. And uh, even during the show, like you should, yeah, 
the fact that I spend this time. I feel extra special that you're here. I do too. I'm not, don't get, I'm not trying to say like, I'm like a no, fucking shit or anything I like that. You. I'm just saying you. like my calendar is always fucking filled. Like I, my Google Calendar, man. My Google Calendar. Like I use that religiously. Like every day I have something planned, something going on like all the time. I can't even keep up with my – I have to look at my calendar just to see what's going on tomorrow. Well, I, I, you know what? I, I want to, uh, I want to plan. I want to add one more thing to your cluttered calendar. <laughs> the, the, so, the pork AV club. So that's one thing. Yes, I'd like to. I'm starting up the pork AV I know. club. Um, and you can't do it during a Bitcoin meetup. The six o'clock thing, man. Don't don't do no, that no, shit. No, I, I did four p.m. It's it's uh, it's right before the Bitcoin meetup. I understand. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm in the chat. I'm I'm I'm, I'm reading it during so, my five like minutes of my slave job. I look at my phone. I see it. So that that's actually what what I wanted to uh, uh, put out to you though, and and this is something that Shire Dude and I were talking about earlier today. Um, I would like to turn your radio show into a TV show. And now it would take a little bit of money. Which we, d- which we do accept Bitcoin donations, by the way. Right. So uh, there's like, uh, there's this um, HDMI box that you can plug into your computer. It's like it works with Ustream and other sort of stream uh, providers. And you can plug in a DSLR camera that has a mini HDMI port, like the cameras that might like my cameras. For you instance. have a really nice camera, by the way. Yeah, and so I I was thinking, you know, like um, something like that. If 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 we were able to uh, uh, get something like that, then when I could plug my cameras in, we could have lights in here, full sound. It'd be a it'd be a full TV show where, and then I could be a live switcher. Just throwing this idea out there. Yeah, the fact that I'm hitting buttons while I'm talking right now, uh, yeah, it's a, it's annoying having to change camera angles whenever someone's talking. I and mean, so mind you, it's, I'm using uh, an app to do that, so I'm just hitting a couple buttons. But And I can QB roll and, you know, like... Yeah, like uh, if we're talking <laughs> about a video, he pulls a video up. I would love... Yes, exactly. That'd be... I, I would love to have an editor to, like, to go back and... The YouTube channel would be the podcast because right now the podcast is like ten times the the listenership than the YouTube video. Rebel YouTube dot com slash Rebel Love Show if you want to watch us, which you probably don't, but get a Chromecast for your TV and watch us as a TV show, which you could do. Chromecast. I used to do that with um, I used to do that with uh Black Sheep Rising. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I had this interesting moment where like I went to cause I went to convention. They had the the bonfire at Conan's uh, house. All right. So like later in the night, it had to be like eleven o'clock at night or something like that. I was I was pretty wasted, but like I walk in the house and whatnot, I run into him like, "Hey man, I want to go check out your studio." So like we talk like the the pod you know podcast shop. Whenever we run into another podcast, or the first thing we do, it's like we talk podcast shop. Like what 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 are you using a mixer? What mixer are you using? What let's uh what app are you using to record? Because you know are you using Audacity? Because everyone uses Audacity. Like he does YouTube. So, like what. He uses a completely different program than what we use to do the show. It's really fascinating because he has multiple camera angles. We're we're like the Black Sheep Rising of Manchester. I like to say that he's the the Rebel Love Show of Keen, but yeah, w- whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but I love Black Sheep Rising. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's fascinating how like we are a TV show. But you want to start this as like, like a TV show, like more than an hour. Like, how what do you what exactly are you envisioning for the Rebel Love Show? So so again, the idea is to um, if you look at Free Talk Live, and I pitched this idea to both Ian and Mark, and and um, um, Mark was all about it. Ian was concerned about uh, financial costs. Um, and, and what I said was I'd monetize it, you know, um, I haven't heard back or anything yet. Um, but the idea was, uh, so you would have, uh, the switching capabilities, having a third person. So you'd have radio talent, which you guys ought to, in, in Shire Dude, I'm surprised you don't have a laptop and well, yeah, I'll have my <laughs> computer here pretty soon, but yeah, <laughs> no, but yeah. So the idea, um, you, you, you all are, are, you know, uh, radio talent, you, you, have your computers set up for recording and, and research and things like that. But, you know, have somebody live and actually um, uh, with the sole intention of paying attention to the video. Um, and so it's, again, it's division of labor. And uh, and so uh, with the actual vision of the show, I would say is, is, is take your exact same personalities. And by the way, you two mesh 
very well together. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. So, so uh, you you basically would be able to cut to high quality video uh, with uh, relevant B roll to current events, and and uh, I, you know I I don't I I think it's a and do it live. All it is is just adding a village live video on Alarun.fm. Should we go live yeah. on Alarun? I think yeah. If you're yeah. yeah, if you're listening to this, get at us like message us. Yeah, or message something. us. Hit 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 the Facebook page, Facebook dot com slash Rebel Love Show. Do you want us to be live on all around? Because we have the opportunity to do so. Because we edit out all sorts of terrible stuff that happens, and I don't know. We don't. I don't edit shit, man. <laughs> the only time I ever edit is if like I fuck up on the 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 mixer and when the mics are too loud and I yeah. listen to it. I'm like I'm I'm trying to be a perfectionist. I gotta like change the audio settings. Yeah, or, but see, then we get shows on time, right? Because they're at that time so yeah that's the benefit is like yeah. it forces you not to edit just i uh, know i'm not well, i'm not for editing I, mean, I know we both say um and ah and shit like that but whatever, we're having normal conversation that's how it normally is when, when you have a conversation i don't like editing like dead space or dead air or ums or different other words or whatnot i don't like doing that right i think like shire dude said you just get used to uh filling that space with especially not Ums, like I really want to say um right now, but I'm I'm just not <laughs> going to, you know. It, it, so you just you get used to it, you, I, you know. And no, I I I understand, but yeah, no. Uh, I would love to have this as I would love to see a high production TV show done from the Shire. And see, this is something that I think, uh, and especially with all the people that we have involved here and the people interested in media. Uh, and you can come out to what I'm going to be starting is the Porcupine AV Club, and we can collaborate on these types of projects. Absolutely. This is what I want to throw out to you, okay? You know how uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know how... <laughs> You know how he talks about how Keen is the liberty media capital of the world? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the amount of people we have in Manchester, we should be able to Why blow Keen it? out of the water. Why the fuck is Manchester not the liberty capital of the world? I was saying oh, this well, earlier. The liberty, media cap oh, well, the liberty media capital of the world. No, mind you, I still think Keen has it. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, we, you know, well, what, I, I what love Keen, but, like, why is it Manchester? I, I know there's a po this is kind of the podcast podcast mecca, especially with the studio down the street and all that jazz. I get that. There's multiple different podcasts coming out of this this neighborhood, but why aren't we the media capital? Well, I I think one thing that Keene does that's different is it, uh, and I would I lived in Keene for a while, um, and I participated in this even though I disagree, uh, largely now, um, I. You know, I don't. I don't like to poke the bear unless it's like a really calculated. Uh, you know, and I'm. I know all my risks and possible consequences and everything. I don't. And and also, I know the type of ripple effect it's going to have, especially if I into if I want something like that to go viral. You know, like I. Um, I think one thing that Keen does is it. Uh, people. Uh, so activists that move to Keene uh, will uh, go with the mindset of we'll just, you know, act as free li as loudly as possible, you know, and, and really loudness isn't uh, the best thing. That's something I've learned uh, since living there, moving away and coming back and then moving uh, back to Manchester or out to Manchester, you know, it's like uh, you, you don't, it, 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 it's about quality and preciseness is, is I think is what's going to come out, uh, is what's going to produce the most effectiveness. Um, and so one thing that, that Free Talk Live and LRN has is, is, is consistency in the fact that they've been at it. They've been, I mean, what are they coming up close to their, what, 15 Almost twenty, Ooh. yeah, years. Fifteen, I want to say. Fifteen years. So I mean, like they're they they're veterans. Um, they're they're very talented. That I mean, they're experienced. 
Um, and and also, I mean, they keep up with current events. They have a great great format as far as their show goes. I mean, the the idea behind uh, callers calling into the show and and having you know uh, you take able control, to yeah. Con- you, 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 know, you know what I have to admit, and one thing that I'm kind of upset about when I talk to people here that have been here for a long time, I'm talking about the like the, the OG uh, Free Staters. Don't get me wrong. I uh, I love Freaking. I blog for Freaking. We're going to talk about Shire Dude here for a second. You want to talk <laughs> about We'll talk about it in a second. Let, let, me, let me finish yeah, my point. But finish we'll, your thought. We'll finish my, let me finish my thought. <laughs> but... I mean, I I can critica- criticize some stuff that Ian has done and Free Keen, like people in Keen has done. That being said, I I agree with most of it, but not all of it. There's some stuff I'm like, what the fuck is going on? At any rate, I don't think the OG Free Staters have a clue the impact of Free Talk Live. They don't understand Alaranda FM. They don't understand Free Talk Live because they're living here. Why the fuck do they need to listen to it when they're actually living here? Like, it's a life, not only is it a lifeline, it wakes people up, and a hell of a lot of people, they're on 150 radio stations across the country. Right. They're they're talking to, you know, libertarians, conservatives, liberals, left and right. And I used to listen to Free Talk Live religiously for like two years, and it it definitely helped me wake up. I used to listen to the point where I was listening almost every night. All right, I don't listen. I'll be honest, Free Talk Live has probably a really horrible business model because after you listen to it long enough, you stop listening. Well, because well, <laughs> well, you move here and you're like, I don't need to listen to it anymore. I'm living here. Well, well, it's because uh, that. Well, that's not necessarily anything to do with the the radio necessarily. I think my in my opinion, uh, in my response to that, I would say that when you move here, you've met Ian Freeman, you've met Mark Edge. Yeah. You you talk to them. You, yes, absolutely. You, 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 they're you human beings, even, just like anyone well, else. Not just like that. It's not even just like saying, okay, well, they're not celebritarians, or, or, they're, or they're celebritarians or whatever, but a celebrity or what? celebrity-ness yeah. doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 I get that. Yeah. So my point is, is, though, is you had philosoph- you've likely had a discussion with them and, and been like, oh, yeah, I'm on the same... I, I I we're on the same page as far as liberty goes. Yeah. You know, and and you've also met, you know, probably a couple other hundred or more uh, libertarians, movers, early movers here. So I mean, like you've had the discussions, you've had the conversations. In fact, if you hang out with libertarians on a regular basis, it's often an echo, an echo chamber. Yeah. And we want to be able to reach out more and talk to people outside of our uh, you know, but I, I I hear you when you say that, but I'll be perfectly honest. I don't want that responsibility. This show, like what I do, I like I'll wake people up that I meet in person. I don't have a problem doing that because I live here. All right, and there's this whole community that they can like get and you know they can get in contact with and be with. So I don't mind waking locals up. I don't want to wake people up on the internet. I don't want to wake people up where they're alone. They have no opportunity to move here. I mean, I spent I spent years being by myself. All right, and I was woke up. And then going around and got me here. I, I, I got here, but I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. I used to do some stuff like that, trying to wake people up. No. I, I, I don't want that responsibility. I don't want to wake people. Well, it's it's not a matter of responsibility. You just do a case by case. No, no, no. In person, no. absolutely. I yeah. mean, I, I understand in person. I, oh, I, with I, the internet? No. I'm talking like, about the internet at large. Like people that are like, like you know, forums? they're like in like, you know, Oklahoma City or they're like somewhere in Boise, Idaho or who the fuck knows. All right. And don't get me wrong. We're, we're probably, there's probably some pun that's like jogging right now. All right. I'm serious. I used to listen to podcasts when I'm jogging. There's some guy or well, woman, I'm sure, hopefully yeah. a woman. I like come to listen on, to audio books while I'm, you know. Exactly. Whatever. But at some point, there's some there's some person that, will, that somehow stumble upon this on iTunes mm-hmm. or Stitcher. Subscribe to us to both and leave us a message, by the way. Leave, leave us a, uh, a rating. We appreciate that. But uh, at any rate, someone out there 
You have no idea who it is. He's still jogging. He's waiting for He's you still to. Jog- <laughs> He's still jogging. What's he gonna say about me? Yeah, watch out for that person with the dog. They're they're mean. <laughs> don't don't go up there and pet that dog. Um, but or, uh, or do. <laughs> <laughs> or do maybe who knows maybe it's your next uh Can't year tell wife. who do. knows um but uh no i mean i used to listen to podcasts all the time but like you wake someone up and they if they don't have that i mean texas has a pretty decent liberty community and but beyond that like it's not there's not a strong liberty community you know and you, you'll spend years or a year or so trying to convince your friends of like why liberty should exist and why freedom should be and why the state shouldn't exist. You you waste your time. You're spending all this time. All right. And I honestly, but you get depressed. You're like, I'm alone and like no one, but everyone thinks I'm the crazy nut. They do. Right. The you know, Napolitano, the, the Stossel, the Ron well, Paul. Yeah. Well, see, That's a big job. Yeah. And I don't want that. I don't want that that burden on my shoulder. I, I stopped. As soon as I moved here, I stopped doing that. Well, the internet's... I don't want to do that. The internet forums, other than going there on a forum for the purpose of learning something or sharing an idea, uh, I think is largely useless. Uh, like, uh, unless you're going there for those things. Yeah, if you so don't if you're think going, that's, If yeah. you're going there to debate things... Like you're saying, like it's not somebody who's like who you know. It's not somebody who you have any like vested interest in their well being or anything. It's some fucking may as well be a fucking bot. Um, I mean, I I don't know. I mean, I've heard of people like meeting on the internet and stuff, or meeting in real person from after having met on the internet. But um, you wait, you haven't wait 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 you haven't met someone that you met on the internet first. I have. You've probably met like hundreds of people. That but I wasn't going to say that until you, have, I, I guess now you're going to ask me. I, yes, I, I met have. you on the yeah. internet. For, <laughs> I, I remember messaging you and talking to you saying that you have a class or teach editing before I ever met you. Yeah, that was an attempt. So that's something that I'm going to be doing again. Trying yes. again, by the way. Yeah, move to <laughs> Manchester so you can learn editing uh, techniques from Bo Davis. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, editing, uh, filmmaking, animation, sound, uh, uh, norm, you know, like uh, studio recording. Um, I want to, and I, you know, and I'm a student myself too. I'm, you know, I've been at this for a while, but I'm still learning new stuff all the time. Um, but I would like to be able to share as much as I can with people, and um, you know, they can donate to my time. And you know, we're like an hour in, and we haven't even talked about. 101 reasons. No, we did a little bit. I mean, so not the, really. I, let me give a quick brief then, if you don't mind. Sure. Go. Yeah, that's why you're on the <laughs> show. That's why you're on here. Go ahead. So the movie, uh, the movie is about uh, this 101 reasons list on the FSP website, uh, which, uh, again, I mentioned before, uh, influenced my move. And uh, what it is is it's a breakdown in five categories of, of – you know reasons to move to New Hampshire. It, it, what 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 it was was a uh, list, a resume, uh, if you will, written by a woman named Michelle Dumas, who is a uh, Libertarian um, Party member. She, I believe she was the vice chair, um, and she uh, in I think two thousand two. Uh, she became aware of the Free State Project, and so she wrote this list and uh, to for for the Free State Project because it actually at the time the Free State Project was voting on a state uh, to choose as its destination for the migration of twenty thousand libertarians to move to this location, and so New Hampshire was chosen uh, largely because of this list that Michelle Dumas wrote um, that convinced a lot of people. And has con- since then continuing to uh, been continuing to uh, convince people to make the move early before the move has been triggered officially, and so um, so what we decided to do was adapt it into a movie. This was uh, sort of uh, like we say the free the Free State Project was the brainchild of Jason Sorens, the 101 Reasons uh, documentary uh, documentary uh, was. Um, the brainchild of uh, Vince Perfetto. This is something that that he really wanted to. Uh, he he was another early mover, still here, just um, uh, 
really great guy and and so he wanted to make this movie and he ended up posting on facebook saying i would like to do this uh who out there um would you know who's who's the right person for the job and so like i think within minutes uh somebody tagged me or uh, i posted on it I, I can't remember exactly but you know i i connected with him never met the guy in my life the craziest thing too um sorry to divert from this but it's it's a funny story feel free he's from the same uh like same the next town over from where i'm from in florida <laughs> we didn't know each other like he actually worked for a radio station that i listened to like same thing like there's um there's Li- Liberty Finks. Unity Evolve. Go listen to that. They're uh, another podcast team out there. Um, Liberty Phoenix. Met him at Porkfest. We had a he he literally lives like an hour away from where I used to live in Illinois. All right. And I remember we had like this like moment at Porkfest in, in Agora Valley. We were talking about like how he he's dreading going back. He's supposed to move sometime in the spring. I really hope he does. But, uh, yeah, like, we never knew each other. Never even talked to each other. Never knew each other in uh, Illinois. And I moved. Wow. And then I started, li- I remember him, t- call- he's like a chronic caller to, to Free Talk Live and, like, every fucking Liberty show out there. All right, so I remember hearing his voice and stuff like that. And then I met him at Liberty, at um, Pork Fest. I'm like, you know, and he's doing his own show now and whatnot. And he's actually really good at it. He's very charismatic, and he wants to move here to Manchester. Hopefully he does soon. Awesome, another media person. Too. Exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping oh, he does. I can't wait till he gets here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, same thing. We lived literally driving distance from each other. Never knew each other. Never. I, I know, like, Rich, Rich Paul was on earlier um, last month, and uh, he was like, the town over from both Mark Edge and Ian Freeman. They, he never knew them. He never knew them. He never knew they existed in Florida until he got here. Yeah, and I'm I'm from the same coast, uh, you know, the same area. Um, there are a lot of us uh, from around Southwest Florida ish, um, you know. But you know, and so that so so the producer Vince Perfetto, uh, he and I, uh, he was the executive producer. Uh, along with a few other producers, uh, some great people, um, Mark Warden, uh, Carolyn Albert, Mar- uh, Gar- well, Gary Milievsky, and uh, um, Ian Freeman. Peace be upon him. <laughs> and uh, so um, we, uh, uh, everybody got on board after we... Uh, we we had a successful Indiegogo campaign. Um, uh, thank you again to everybody who donated to the movie. By the way, uh, we, we ra- raised about eight thousand uh, eight thousand Federal Reserve notes of uh, both amazing. Federal Reserve notes and Bitcoin, and it contributed to that's uh, huge equipment purchases, travel expenses, and and then uh, and as well as uh, what it's still being used there's still money left over we're putting towards uh, distribution and marketing and um, and so the back to the movie though the movie uh, is about that list uh, that I was mentioning before and so um, what we wanted to do is uh, showcase I, I went around for the past year or so and just recorded as much as I could, I, I didn't get out to everywhere I wanted to and meet and talk to as many, all the people I wanted to, uh, but which is why I'm still going to be doing some post-release videos. There's going to be lots of lots more videos added to the uh, the the 101 Reasons Film Channel. Well, I was going I was going to ask you, um, what's next after one? You 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 got you get, you got it out. Right, so the so like what's so next? Yeah, so the hour length movie is out now. You can you can watch it for free on YouTube. Um, but what we have, I have a bunch of what I, I've been calling them pre-release uh, uh, mini documentaries or. And movies. thank you for showcasing the Rebel Love Show and some of your pre-release stuff, by the way. No problem. Thanks for having me on. This is, I think, what the second time. I've second been on. time, yeah. We've had a lot of returning guests in the last few weeks, so uh, yeah, you're you are number. Well, when I was first on, like that. 
when I was first on was it almost a year ago, right? When you first no, on? no, you you got Shire Time on. Yeah, Shire Time wise has been over a year. <laughs> All right, Shire Time yeah, is probably like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you were you were what, like six months ago. <sighs> What, I wasn't May? moved. I wasn't you, moved yet. He wasn't even here yet. And I got here about six <laughs> months ago. That was with Joel at the time. Um, you were here back in. I want. God, that feels like. That feels like years ago. Man. It does. Yeah, you're right. Okay, Shire it, time. I understand Shire what you're time. About Shire now. time. <laughs> you have no. I, I. I was a different person when you recorded me on there. Like I was. I was still a new move. I'm still a new mover, but like that was like when I was still getting my feet wet. Um, I'm so fresh in that movie, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that was, I want to say that was sometime in May, I think. Go back to, the, if there's some hardcore Robo Love Show fan, go back there and, like, figure it out. I don't know. I'm, uh, I think it's, like, back in May. Um, but, yeah, that was a different, I, was, I, was, I don't even recognize myself in the mirror, like, oh, dude, from I'm three months ago, well alone, ten, like, eight months ago. You know, I don't, I, I literally don't. I'm an, I'm a different person than I was two weeks ago. Yeah, right. Three weeks. No, I released the movie three weeks ago. I I just started. Yeah, I just started coming out of my hermit shell about two weeks ago. Um, and I don't know. Maybe you all noticed any different. I don't know. I'm I'm trying. I think I'm a little cooler. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Um, no, I, 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 we, uh, we've all gone through these transitions and everything. And, that's and another thing that's fascinating is kind of paying attention to people, especially, I love watching new movers. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> you know? All, everybody's uncomfortable, but then everybody realizes, oh, we just have to just, you know, just be, be comfortable. But they change, <laughs> they change so fast. They, they, they like, uh, uh acclimate and then like they evolve they first they acclimate and then they evolve and like you kind of like you're you're watching them seeing like what happens next like what's going to happen like what are they going to do and you know they they go through huge you see you you literally see the stages of their lives like changing yeah you know you know so uh one one thing we we all a lot of us saw uh was like the bitcoin you know the bitcoin millionaires come out of nowhere (laughs) You See know? that happened before I got here. Yeah. Like I didn't even witness that happen. Like it hit a thousand before I moved. You know, so like I didn't see. You know, we weren't Bitcoin balling in here. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't see that. I well, I I saw it. I watched it. I was one of those that's uh, that has uh, w- woken up every morning and gotten up, you know, stretched and kicked myself in the ass because I didn't buy it at four dollars. Oh my god! You coin. have. I was paying attention yeah. to Bitcoin at five bucks, man. I was too. That's what I'm saying. You know, like I, I didn't. I had an opportunity to buy, you know, to to not buy, you know, an ounce of pot. And you know, <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, and just throw it all in Bitcoin, you know, or throw whatever percentage of my my earnings or savings into Bitcoin. I I, I should have. And you know what? I just watched uh, this morning. I watched it go from three seventy six to three forty nine or something like that. In my opinion, yeah. d- first off, I'm do a, do not listen to us for financial advice. No, of course <laughs> not. No, listen not to your all. internal gut. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, if you really want financial advice, go check out JJ and uh, Darren at. Uh, Neo Cash, which is recorded right down the street. Yeah, Neo Cash Radio. Neo yeah. Cash Radio. I think we've all been on. Have you been on it? I haven't yet. You haven't yet. They I'd haven't like to. You. Be. I don't know. Hey, Darren, I'm calling you out. We'll talk about Dogecoin. Get your show on iTunes, because <laughs> like I know you're probably not gonna listen to this, but if anyone knows Darren Tap, message him and tell him that you want Neo Cash Radio, which is also just got on on LRN, which is awesome because they need some something that is. Mo- you know about money i guess I yeah know. they don't really have anything like they that. they don't have anything like that but that being said if you want to listen to the stuff about like hardcore about bitcoin cool. he's been on the show back in april we need to get well, not april but august he needs to come back on but um another podcast team out of uh, manchester but not just a, he's not just a bitcoin guru though this guy is revolutionizing uh uh math education for kids yeah yeah he's a yeah. he is a uh he's a professor and he's doing like his agorist like you know um 
homeschooling thing, or I don't know what the hell he's exactly doing. He's calling it the arithmetic playground, and actually, he does a big piece on it um, on my my show. Uh, it's like this too. So if you look up, it's like this too on YouTube. Hashtag, it's like this too. Or yeah, well, it, you is can find it, it called it on, hashtag. You can like find it through too? the the Free State Project YouTube channel. Um, it's pretty much the only thing that's being produced on that channel right now, and uh, that's an episode that's coming up. But by the time you see this, it might actually be up. And he goes into like uh, is that is that a jab at me not publishing fast enough? Yeah, that's that's oh god, like I know uppercut I know. dude. I, I, I'll, get, I'll get I'll get <laughs> I'll get it up, man. <laughs> No, I, I apologize for the podcast listeners. Like I, I understand. It's been a couple of weeks. Been a, bi- it's been a very chaotic couple of weeks in my life. You see, but I, on it's like this too. I have um a Cecilia to like whip me into shape. So uh, like, she I, does like the a whip off. apparently. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the she word on the that's leash. the word on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Cecilia. I love you. I'm, I'm just messing with you. Cecilia. Oh. <laughs> an- an- another former Keniac, by the way, in Manchester, or possibly. She's in Manchester. yeah, she's en route. I think. Yeah, she's on her way. Not that it's a competition. I trigger the Keniac. Cecilia. What, what Let's use that, that hashtag. What does that even mean? Trigger this is trigger the. You her had move. good hashtags. You had hashtag no yeah. sleep till Keniac. No sleep till that Keniac. That was awesome. Which that people was a- started using. Yes, it was hilarious. And <laughs> yes. then on the way back, it was no sleep till Manch. <laughs> this was from Keenvention, like to and from. No sleep till Manch. I drove in a car with you. You slept almost the entire <laughs> fucking way, and you slept in the car I was on the Keen as well. You didn't say no sleep till Keen because you slept on the way to Keen. <laughs> There's video of it. Oh, YouTube.com no. slash don't, VR. Don't even go VR watch Rebel. 101 Reasons again. Don't even watch that. Are you telling people <laughs> not to watch my content? Because I didn't record that. Lauren took the video and just started recording <sighs> you sleeping. There's video of, apparently that I uploaded of him sleeping, but yeah. nonetheless. <laughs> Anywho, um, 101, yeah, great documentary. Thank you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> No, I so you you asked. I think you asked me earlier, and I forgot uh, to, or I, I maybe got off track or something. Again, I'm smoking cannabis. It, it's it, okay. It affects I'm, the memory. I'm, it's I'm slightly temporarily. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think what I want to do uh, moving forward is to again like share my knowledge with people uh, aside from the yeah, movie. Yeah, I'm a horrible editor. Well, uh, I can help you with that. Uh, I just need to, you know, honestly, I'll be perfectly honest. We can honest. help each other with that. That's why I want to yes. create the group because I can't help everybody. I'm, I'm, d- wanna... I'm down for the struggle, man. I'm, I'm not against it. You know, um, I just want to be able to edit fast. Like I have all these great ideas of like some video, I, I, videos I want to do. I have a decent amount of subscribers on one YouTube channel, but I haven't really uploaded anything to it because. I, because I haven't had time. I've been living my life. I've been a little selfish about myself instead of being. Because before I moved, I was like all about like putting stuff out and stuff like. That. Even when I got here, when I was like all gun ho, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the world and da 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 da. And I started living my life. How 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 Randian are you? I'll be perfectly honest. I haven't read a single Ayn Rand. But phil- philosophy wise, I mean, you 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 can understand the person by their quotes, I guess, if you. Will. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm. I definitely, I, obviously, I own myself. Um, and I'm in the it whole for me. Selfishness is a virtue, I guess, is the one thing that I'm thinking. Yeah, about. yeah, no, I get that. Um, I I can relate. I mean, I do care about. Other, I care about. I love humanity. I want to liberate humanity and. You know, you also, even, even if like shit like this like, doesn't liberate us, like in the future, maybe some. I, again, I I really do view everything that you know people at this sitting at the table right now do is we're being historians down the road. Like I understand we're we're in this for the long haul. You know, I understand that like you know we're, everything we do, it's not going to like change the world tomorrow. You know, but I, again, at some point we're gonna inspire someone else, maybe. Five years from now, someone will find this this episode on YouTube or the podcast, or they'll look at your documentary like ten years from now, and know. they'll probably think I can do that way better than those guys. Exactly. <laughs> probably. And, and, hey, great, and you if know. you have an idea, that's great. That's a great idea. You should do that. Yeah. Right. That's right. what we wanted was more spearheaders. You know, like because we're you know like individually spearheading our own things, but 
you know, can come out here and fucking do it. Yeah. yeah. But no, I'm very. And that's I, what you, and you're doing it. You're living your life, and you're doing this. I want you. you putting, I, you're obviously, we know. I mean, this. everyone at this table, we all live very interesting lives, and we. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. We, I I talk about personal life on this show, but I don't talk about everything that's very very personal. But I can I can say without a shadow of a doubt that all of us live a very very interesting life. Oh yeah. Okay. And I want my life. I I forgot who quoted this. I forgot who said it. And I apologize that I shouldn't know this. But like, is it Nick Gillespie? No, it's not. Uh, no, I don't think so. Was it Nick Gillespie's hair? <laughs> <laughs> Which never. Or is it his leather coat? <laughs> his leather coat. <laughs> um. Those both deserve Facebook pages if you have time. But, <laughs> well, there's a Facebook page for his leather coat. There better be. Well, know. there's ones for there's one for uh, Garrett's uh, Garrett hair's Ian's hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at any rate, no, I mean, I live free. Yeah. As much as I fucking can. Right. All right. When it comes to my personal life, when it comes to my like life in general, I mean, yeah, I go to a slave job, and it's hard to relate to. I know I was told that it like, seems elitist when I say muggles, but it's true. Like, you know, when I talk to, like, the common folk that, like, you know, watch football and the big Patriots and Bruins fans and all <laughs> that jazz, I live my life to the point where, like, my my life, my life is a rebellion against the state or against the system, whatever you want to look at. Like, you know, here I am, come get me. You know, like, I, I don't care... I'll, I'll break social norms left and right because yeah. I'm living my life. That's how we're similar is neither of us came here to hide. I, I didn't come here to hide. Right. I understand that that's a huge risk. And you have no you, – you're an agorist. You're, you're not you're, – you're, 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 you're doing editing left and right. You're not you're, – you're working for yourself. So you, you can't really relate to this. But I can tell you right now, okay, when you quit your job – which I did back in October. I hated my job at the time. I quit my job. All right. And if I Google my name, and I, I talked about this on the direct action panel at Keenvention, which I haven't even uploaded to this fucking podcast channel yet, which I should, which would probably be up before you even listen to this episode. But at any rate, I quit my job. I Googled my name. Because I figure an employer's gonna Google my name. It's it's 2014, and I Google my name, and there's a lot of bunch of people that have similar names. We have a common name, all right. So there's like a Olympian. There's a bunch of different congressmen. There's business people. There's there's a site that has like RobertMathias.com or .net. There's like some business guy or something like that. So I'm like on like a third page or something like this. So I'm not too worried. And then I Google my name. And I just add. N H. I had N H. All right. Every fucking thing I've done here: jury nullification, blog posts, interviews, whatever. Everything pops up. The show, everything. Freaking dot com. Freaking my blog post. Everything that I've done, the entire thing was me. All right, and it was. I had a nervous breakdown for like maybe 10, 15 minutes until I smoked. <laughs> uh, I, won't, I won't lie. And I'm like, oh, my God. How the hell am I going to eat? <laughs> I had enough savings for a couple of months. But like, how am I going to find a job? What am I going to do? Like, oh, my God. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm like, I don't know what or how I'm going to do with my life. Like, I, I, I put so much into this that I'm so public I'm I'm out there. There's no way I can contact all these websites. I was in the union leader a couple times, you know. Like, there's I'm only gonna go up to the union leader. I'm like, hey, you're you're the like the biggest can newspaper. You edit me out can you like take me out of like your newspaper so I can find a job? Like, that's not gonna happen, you know. And oh man, it was. And luckily, I found a job, and I, I actually found a really good paying job. Hopefully, if I bust my ass, but like it could pay good, um, and it's a day job. I don't know. I'm not gonna say what it is on on air, but it was crazy. Is case in point, um, it was a huge fear that I was, uh, you know, I'm out there. I, I I did enough stuff. I can't hide who I am anymore. It was a huge realization. It t- it was like a week of like you know stressing, 
you know, I was hugely stressing, especially considering I was afraid of, like, th- this was my my week. I quit my job. I actually quit my job when I was in Keene. I emailed my boss while I was in Keene for Pumpkin Fest. I emailed him. I'm like, I quit. <laughs> and I'm like, because I, I knew I was, it was just a horrible job. I couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore. And they got me here, but I couldn't take it. And I was, uh, I remember freaking out about it. You know, I was so freaking out. And, but then, literally a day later, I started looking for jobs. I started looking. I got hired on the spot at two different places. One was part-time. One was full-time. And uh, it was amazing. I'd never been hired on the spot. Well, alone with two jobs in one week. Never happened to me. And then, of course, one was like, oh, by the way, you have to do a drug test in two days. <laughs> I had smoked that week and I was so fucking stressed that I, <laughs> I, I was going to feed. Facebook feet. posts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I deleted that, by the way, just in case, like, you know, they, like, you know, well, saw see, that. That's why, that's why I don't post public on facebook you know like open to everyone like i have it set to my friends you know? see you are different between you and me i am now mind you all the posts i do on facebook you know everything i post usually goes to twitter as well and google plus but uh and instagram i love my instagram feed. anyone out there that list, that watches my instagram which i know there's multiple people people that do um i love that more than anything else more than the show more than any YouTube video I ever do, more than any activism. I really, my favorite thing that I do here is my Instagram feed. So if you don't know about my Instagram feed, go check it out. You can check it out in the show notes on this. I have the link to it. Go go check this out. I, that's my that's my favorite thing by bar none than anything I do here. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I freaked out. Then I got the job. It was a roller coaster, man. I, I was freaking out that I'm like, how am I going to live? And then I found the job. And then I had to pass a drug test, which I smoked. And somehow I detoxed and I got it. So they're going to find this. Hopefully they never listen to this episode, which I don't broadcast what this is on, on air. Um, but, uh, and you know what? If you do, just like, I think I think the moral of your story, I don't know if this is your intent or not. But I don't even know where I'm is, going with this. It's to, not, it's to not worry. You know, like, you, if you're worried about, if you're thinking about moving here and, and getting involved in this community, like, and you're worried about, like, uh, am I not going to get a job or uh, am, am I not going to find the right place or is the, like, there there is uh, there are people that are going to help you just because they want you to be here. They want, we all want more people like us here you know absolutely and and when you when you get here you're like yeah i want more people like us here too and and you you you'll likely end up going to a move-in party or something and helping somebody move some furniture you know because it's it's a nice considerate thing to do and 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 you get to meet people and network you know this is a horrible thing for me to say and i'll be perfectly honest I haven't gone to a new movers party yet. And I didn't even get it. well. I've gone to multiple new movers parties at the, like the cool or whatnot, like where like once a month there's a oh, every yeah. Tuesday there's a new movers party and it's fucking awesome. It's been awesome for like the last six months. Every time there's like fifty to one hundred people that show up, it's amazing. But I haven't gone to like you know the move in to like help people move and whatnot. Boxes. So. And so. Did you have a move in party though when you came here? No. Okay, so I did not because all I'm okay. People know my story. I don't want to repeat it again. It's in a song. So for it's crying in a out song loud. for God's sake that was like <laughs> recorded after Porkfest in the studio. The Ballad of Rob Mathias. Look God it up. Damn it! Don't look that fucking shit up. That's so fucking <laughs> embarrassing. Um, but go ahead. Well, I was gonna say if you're if you're thinking about moving here, you know, like let us know. And yeah, you know, let somebody you know go on the go on to the Free State Project uh, website, and I'm sure there's contact information for people, or go on to uh, Facebook and and join. There's groups. I think there's a what the Porcupines group is an open. Yes, group, Porcupines right? group. There's the Free a State Project welcome group. wagon group. There's a welcome, FSP welcome wagon. Welcome wagon. There's a job alert pages. FSP there's job a alerts. House yes. House alert pages. Yes. There's Housing. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of different uh, and, th- and there's a lot of stuff that's region spe- specific too. So if you're interested in like 
in in something coastal or or something by a lake or there, in the there, mountains. There or, is a Facebook group for every city almost at, oh, at this yeah. point. Lakes region, where Manchester, Keene, uh, the lake, um, the Free Coast. There is Nashua, though I have not. I don't even know what the hell goes down in Nashville. I think they're very close now. I don't know. And I would love to see Grafton be more like vocal because I hear great things, but I don't. I hear about it secondhand, but I don't see it. But um, no. But the, every every area of man of uh, of uh, New Hampshire has like some sort of group chat or like you know a group forum or something like that. And it's amazing to see all. And and on top of that, there, there's, I've lost track of how many, I'm, I know I'm not even in all of them, but there's so many different Facebook groups to be in. But yeah. I mean, there's so many you can't even keep track of how many there are. And you know, it's funny because a lot of that, you know, we we talk about armchair activism, you know, and stuff like that. But like, we'll have our armchair activism where we're talking to somebody, you know, like. Uh, but we're collaborating on projects. It's oftentimes, you know, like we're either trying to resolve, situ- you know, like uh, problems, create solutions, and and just, you know, and collaborate on on uh, thought provoking. Uh, problem solving issues or you know uh, projects. It's not armchair activism if I get a standing desk. <laughs> I want to <laughs> you a standing desk. <laughs> I want to get one, man. I s- I stand hey, so much for my job. I don't. I want to sit down when I get home. For most good posture, though. I imagine. Yeah, I think I generally have good posture anyway. I don't. I need to work on it. Huh. Well, I actually, I used to be a ROTC Nazi in high school, in the ROTC Reserve Officer Training Corps. True story. Really? Yeah. So, so you I were actually I was ultra status. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess, man. Like I cut my hair, but still on the inside, I was pretty, pretty much a rebel. But yeah, I mean, back okay. to what we were originally what talking say. about. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, I mean, I live my life. I li- my life is. I would like to say, like, my life has kind of gotten to the point where. It's almost a rebellion against the system. I mean, like, I live free as much as I can. I don't give a shit what anyone thinks of my life. Right. And I've run into people that are like, are, unfortunately, there's a couple cons- you know conservatives here and whatnot, but the vast majority aren't. But like, even in like when I go into my day job, I feel like sometimes I'm jacking myself into the matrix for forty to fifty hours a week. But even then, I I don't really hide who I am. I don't. I I. I'm cautious to talk about my activism, but well, you, it's not one of the first things you talk about upon no, meeting somebody. No, just exactly. Just like just like they, you know, like they may not be a libertarian, <laughs> but they probably have some niche thing. Some they weird like guns, or they or smoke or pot, or something. I actually had a great talk with a, uh, and hope I, I I actually sent him. The link to your movie, um, and I had to go through like three weeks of training at my new job. All right, which I, again, I got a new job in like two days after I quit my old job. It was like destiny. I don't know, um, and I'm really happy about this new job. A good job market too. Yeah, it's a great job market in the Shire. Like seriously, the unemployment here is is lower than most of the country, if not all the country. It, yeah, it took me four days to transfer my job here. Yeah, like you can get a tr- you. I transferred here. For, if you have a corporate job and there's a and there's a, a place here in, Ma- in uh, Manchester or anywhere new, in New Hampshire or the Shire, transfer. Like that's the best way to get here. It really, really is. Um, but uh, I ha- I went through three weeks. So I'm I'm chilling with this guy for like three weeks. Three weeks, I'm training with this this guy, and uh, he he comes out to me, and we're talking. We kind of have like hints of uh, what we're talking about and what's going on and all that jazz, and, and uh, find out that he is a uh, he's a huge pot activist. Like he's that's his big huge issue, and like he start he lives he he's he's in Maine and he's. And they have better medical marijuana. And he's like, he's starting, a, he's starting his own business with medical marijuana. He's doing all these things. He wants to be very vocal and wants to, like, promote it, like, full-on legalization everywhere. And he's also pro-gun. He's a Ron Paul supporter. I'm like, there's this thing in New Hampshire <laughs> 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 that it's on your doorstep that you don't even know about. <laughs> like, you don't even know. Like, you just, you just met, like, your contact to like 1500 plus people 
that you didn't even know existed. <laughs> They're literally like an hour's drive from you. And uh, my last day of training, I uh, I emailed him. He gave me his email address. I'm like, I sent him your documentary. I'm like, I didn't even talk about the Free State Project. I didn't even talk about any of it. I, I kind of hinted at like why I moved here. But I talking about how there's a lot of libertarians and stuff like that, but I didn't talk about the Free State Project. And I, I sent him that. He I sent him that literally a couple of days ago. He hasn't. Ho- hopefully, he responds soon, which I'm pretty sure he will. But he was like hardcore down into all that. But uh, yeah, it's interesting how sometimes you feel like you um, you have this. I mean, I feel like I live my life with a purpose, and sometimes I feel like I touch people. Like you know, you you spread the message, or you you have interactions with people for a reason. Yeah, you know, and sometimes uh, this person was that that person. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But everybody, everybody's going to learn from an interaction or has an opportunity to yeah. at least, you know. So yeah, I always feel like sometimes when I'm talking to someone, it's you know I'm planting that seed, but there's a reason why I talk to that person for a while. You know. Well, yeah. If you live in a life of no regrets, which we all should strive to, and it's not just from like having no regrets. That's just from not regretting. You know, like, so, like, if you if you live that life, uh, you have, you know, an opportunity to, you know, just be be uh, happy. Yeah. I mean, it's. Well, like, for me, I, uh, for, for me, like, I live my life. Regard, I don't give. I don't care what people think of me. Right. I, I mean, mean, I I, get, I care about actions. my I care about re- my reputation. Don't get me wrong. If you ever move here, by the way, folks, your reputation means everything. It does. Absolutely. It's your it's your social currency. Don't fuck people. Right. Don't fuck with them. Not just don't do a wrong. Of... Not because I mean obviously because it's the right thing to do to be a good person, but your reputation, it 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 it's valuable, and right. you want to make sure that it's just. That being said, I'm going to live free. I'm not going to aggress against any human being. Right. But I want, I want to be me. I want to be me, regardless of whatever people think of me. Right. So long as you're not doing anything wrong, there should be no reservations about your actions. So you should have the most highest confidence level in your life. If you are living, you know, to if you are you are living to your principle and living free, you should should be the happiest you you could possibly be. You should Absolutely. be confident, content, you know, and that's that's I think how a lot of us feel here, you know, because we have, we are surrounded by people who are principled and and or or becoming more principled. Again, we're all shedding statism, yeah. you know. So it's uh, what the hell are y'all waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Trigger move. Don't don't wait, folks. Just just move. That's what it is. But, yeah, my, I feel like sometimes I want my life to be a rebellion against the system at, 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 some, at some point because I just want to live fr- so free that people are, like, you know, freaking out that I'm living so free. I don't know. Maybe I don't. I'm just doing my thing. I'm doing who I am. Everyone at this table does who they are. You know, I mean, I know Shire, dude, you're I, – I don't even want to try to explain what, how your life is. damn day. You, <laughs> you have people. You have no idea what he was like when he first moved here. When I first met him, watch to the Hundred One Reasons film. Watch, watch the Hundred One Reasons. He's like, you'll uh, see little me. <laughs> you see, you see little Shire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there almost needs to be a sequel to the One on One, just to like to re-interview Shire, dude, and see how he is now <laughs> compared to how he was. Um, but we're way over our normal hour time slot because I I I felt I felt as if this is still going on, so I didn't even want to stop it. Um, but Bo, where can uh, where can people find you and where you're at and what you gotta do and oh, well, you know, what's can... what? Oh, first off, before you even say that, what what's really next? What's next for you? I want I really want to ask that question before we head off. So what's next? Uh, I you know like I was saying before, I want to start the uh, the Porcupine AV Club. Um, which is just going to be a, a multimedia gathering, you know, of, of, of a, a gathering of multimedia producers, people from different mediums of, of production. And so uh, I'd like to offer a time for us all to c- get together, collaborate, and and uh, and create art. And so Absolutely. that's that's one thing I want to do. Uh, ultimately, uh, yeah. 
I want to create art. And so. where, can, where can people find you at? Well, me, uh, uh, Facebook, or just come here. Come here to, to New Hampshire. I'll be here. Okay. <laughs> find him in this room, uh, man. If you want to watch <laughs> the movie, though, go to uh, uh, YouTube.com slash 101ReasonsFilm or go to 101ReasonsFilm.com. And you can watch the movie on either one of those. Yeah, because both, both me and Shire Dude are featured in it. And Roblo Show is, too. So go watch it. And it's a great reason why you should move. Like, it's there's a lot of great content in that film. Uh, Shire Dude, we didn't really talk about it. I, I, we hinted at it. We should have talked about it earlier. Oh, but the conversation yeah. kept going. Congratulations. Uh, give me. G- where's your beer? I you have don't, you, oh, only empty you beers over here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you are now a, a blogger for Free Keen. I'm so a Free Keener now, you're man. A free, you're a Keeniac. Oh, snap. By, uh, oh. by association for being on Free Keen. And but by, by the way, you are the you are the answer to stop Free Keen. Yo, everyone who's watching this who stopped Free Keen, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if Ian ever needed an answer to stop Free Keen, it'd be Shire, dude. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna shy dude the shit out of them. Oh my god! <laughs> um, but congratulations, yeah. I've been blogging since um since the spring. But like, yeah, it's it's you you deserve to be on there. I'm I'm glad you're blogging on it, there. It's all coming full circle, man. We're on LRN. We're blogging LRN. for Free King. It's fucking crazy, man. And yeah. it's, we got thing, Bo Davis on the freaking show. It's I know good we're times. supposed to with Bo Davis on on our show. Talking about his documentaries, which include us the move. It's just yeah, man. crazy, crazy round circle. I, I I hear you. Yeah, anything else I'm doing, I'm going to try to get it out there on ShireDude.com. And what's the other show you're doing? Well, I'm doing It's Like This too, but I'm thinking of just having that uh, you know, accessible through ShireDude.com. Well, you're not posting those episodes on ShireDude.com yet? Um, I'm posting the the show is posting on the Free State Project YouTube, but then bloopers for that show are posting on the Shire Dude YouTube. You just post all of it on Shire Dude because yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, I'll have the playlist accessible. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywho, um, you can find all the content for this show on RebelLoveShow dot com. Uh, you can find obviously Shire Dude, Shire Dude dot com. Uh, you can find any content that I do, which I'll be honest, I'm a slacktivist. I don't post that often. But I have my own website, vrebel.com. Uh, and also donate some Bitcoin to me, some Bitcoin to Bo. Uh, donate some Doge to uh, Shire Do because he, he loves Doge. And uh, I, I don't know if he likes Bitcoin, but he really loves Doge. And uh, also uh, go to lrn.fm. And listen to us on their podcast loop. Download TuneIn uh, Radio on your phone. Hook it up to your your car deck and listen to us when you're commuting to work or jogging or anything like that. Or go to iTunes or Stitcher and actually download us and uh, listen to us on your favorite podcast uh, feed. But anyways, we are out, kids. So uh, peace. Peace. Everybody wait. Amen. Yeah. I thought we were talking about spray-on tans. Doesn't <laughs> she have a spray-on tan? I don't know. Well, aren't you a Betty White fan? Uh, Did you ever read that? Are you saying you're not? (laughs) I'm indifferent. You're indifferent from Betty White. Wow. Yes. You think you know a guy. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were a huge, like, Betty White fan. No. So you don't like you don't like Golden Girls? I'm not a like an anti fan. Did did you used to watch Golden Girls back in the day? No. Why not? (laughs) Because I was watching cartoons. Okay, I was definitely singing the Full House theme song earlier. That's what I was singing. Full House? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what I was singing. At okay. another point, I'll explain why Full House should be used instead of the Bible for a moral compass. We can do that another time. That's great. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Why? You kids ready to record? Um, well, go. Technically, it already was recording for a while now, so... I, I gotta start the show at some point. Though. Oh yeah, All right. rolling. Yeah. Basically, if you sit down, put the headphones on. Mm-hmm. Imagine we're already recording. I I have uh, assumed that we have been. <laughs> well, we have been. <laughs> so we have a I blooper. Did, no, reel. I didn't hit record in a while. I, I should have hit re- earlier because there's some funny stuff I wish I recorded. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. Okay. It's good. All right. Hey, Carlos, Mateus, we're gonna record. So. Just letting you know, we're actually starting now. Like for real, for real, real, for realsies. Yeah. You made for him realsies. <laughs>
Okay. I'll wait till you don't smoke any. <laughs> it's picked up on the mic. I was hoping we were going to start off that way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all laughing about something that just no, happened. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to start it up. Okay, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>